One day, while making our way towards Point Pleasant, we noticed that things have changed a bit. The bridge to Point Pleasant is covered in all sorts of twigs and brambles and Mothman decorations. We see the dismembered heads of the scorched, and it's almost like a nest has been built here. Moving into Exploring the Town, we find that Point Pleasant has changed in a few key locations. First, heading down to the water side, we find a huge bonfire surrounded by vines. There are cages, flags, hanging bodies, glowing candles, human bones splayed out on a table, surrounded by Mothman eggs. And standing nearby is a woman named Observer Johanna. You seek his wisdom, yes? I seek his company. My mother, she wanted to be here. She never saw him again. Oh, Papa. My brother Yella, he tried to clone him, you know. So foolish. His wisdom was not his at birth. The little ones, they eat for Yella. The wise one's secret is my secret too. I have not told them yet. No, no, I won't be telling you either. They say the dust may harm us if we breathe it too long. Who said so? Observer Marlin. Well, they told him. They told him, he told me. I can't wait to see him. It's been so long. He's missed so many of my birthdays, you know. How many equinoxes will I live to see, I wonder? Could this be my last? One can only hope, yes? We have traveled so very far to be here. I know he is happy to see our little faces. So it is all worth it. Do you think the dim ones can change? If they did, we'd have less things to kill. Perhaps this way is the best. I miss him so whenever he's not here with me. My papa. Do you also feel the tingle in your nose when the planets align? Oh, it is very tingly. Well, talking with her, we kind of get a little bit of a story painted for us. I suppose this can be up to our own interpretation, but this is what I got. I get the impression that Johanna here thinks that her father is the Mothman. She presumably came here to Point Pleasant to see the Mothman again, and she talks about him in more endearing terms. Yes, she reveres him, but she's also here for his company. It sounds like her mother recently died, and this causes her grief because mother never got to see Papa again, who is presumably this Mothman. So could Observer Johanna be the daughter of the Mothman? If not, maybe she's convinced this is true. Next, we can walk north down the road until we reach the next bridge. Beneath this bridge, we find another ritual pyre, again surrounded by vines. This area is decorated much like the last, and standing nearby, we find Observer Marlin. Why are they still here? Not you, them. Wish I could be rid of you. I'm sorry. You know I didn't mean that. I can't. I won't. You cannot make me. No, you can't. No. Oh, fine. Who is this? I don't know. Do you know? Yes, you. Do you know? Who are you? It's their eyes. They watch from the rooftops. Why? Why? That's right, that's right! I'm not going to say that. No! Well, if you want them to know so bad, why don't you just tell them yourself? I've heard that one before. No, that's a new one. Okay, who's there? Okay, Vault Dweller who? <laughs> oh, grow up. No. Yes. Well, no. Yes, I see. Fine. What is in the pages of those books? Why can't we read them? You can. Then what do they say? Really? Stop it. I didn't. No, you stop that. Keep it down, will you? Did you say something? No. Oh, 
That was you. I thought I told you we weren't talking. Okay, well, Marlin here's got some issues. Sounds like he's got at least one invisible friend, or perhaps more, someone or something is talking to him. And he said a few important things that we don't quite understand yet. He wants to know the contents of some books. He can't read them, but we can? And what are these eyes that stare at him from the rooftops? Passing through Point Pleasant, we find a lot of Mothman cultist decorations, hanging bodies, big tarps and banners, fires all over the place, boxes filled with candles, and the next big change we find is when we arrive at the Point Pleasant Church. Here again we find another ritual pyre surrounded by vines, lots of other decorations, and standing nearby is Observer Errol. I miss the lantern's glow. My hunts often send me far from home, but never like this. I can barely see it shine from here. Mmm, your smell, alluring, makes me want to rip you open. The wise one is the only one who understands. The only one who can show me what I must see. Who I must see. With each communion, the tomes here should reveal more truth to you. How enviable. The tomes we keep here speak truths that not all can see. Can you read them, I wonder? Can you peer upon them all? The wise one always leaves when they begin to scream. Why? Does he not find them worthy? Or me? Oh, surely not. Ah, foundation. I wish I could walk among its people, waiting for him to show me which of their flock to bring to slaughter. Those voices he hears, what do they tell him? How can I hear them too? What prey can they reveal to me? They are wasted on him. He bickers and cowers. He holds a gift and he wastes it. Why does he show them to me when he knows I cannot leave my station? Is he testing me? I envy the blood your lot spills during our ritual. But alas, my duties as observer prevent me from participating in the festivities. Johanna seems to understand. I wonder what the wise one has shown her. Before my first communion, I was lost. A rabid dog eating table scraps. Hmm. Now, he has shown me to my seat at the finest restaurants for the finest meals. This equinox has allowed him to show me my next meal. I am eternally grateful for his guidance. If only he would join me at the table. All right, Observer Errol here is apparently a hunter. A very violent and morbid man. He wants to rip us open because we smell so nice. Great. He likes Foundation, wonderful, but mainly because he wants to kill everybody there. Fun. We detect a bit of brutality and ruthlessness in these cultists, who apparently only worship one Mothman, this wise Mothman. Even Observer Johanna said that it was probably a good thing that she could still kill the dim ones, whomever they are. And Errol was probably talking about Marlin when he talked about how he could hear the voices, and that made him a little jealous. So, looks like maybe Marlin isn't crazy. Maybe he really is hearing voices. We get our first clue as to where these guys came from. Some place called The Lantern, a place that shines bright, to them at least. Where is this lantern, and why did they come here to Point Pleasant? And we finally understand the tomes that both Marlin and Errol were talking about when we further explore the church. Here we find two sets of display cases, each filled with three books. However, when we open the cases and try to read the books, we learn that we are not yet worthy to gaze upon them. Huh. 
Looks like we need to meet a prerequisite before we can read these books. The next big change here at Point Pleasant is atop the roof of the Mothman Museum. Here we find quite a lot. More nest-like material, more effigies, candles. There are votive offerings set to either side, plates filled with foodstuffs and vegetables, human remains and skulls. We see those uh, Hornwright devices placed on the roof here. Wonder what they're going to be doing with those. And in the middle, we see a huge throne. There is a Mothman depicted on the top of the throne with glowing purple eyes. And we can sit in it without incurring the wrath of the guys up here. And we do so in a bit of a cocky way. We put one leg up here to the side looking really comfy. We find two fellows here on the top. First is this guy sitting in a wheelchair. This is Wise Charles the Forewarned. Fly now. No, he wants them spared, fool. The light, wise one, Kanawa. Kanawa. He must be referring to the Kanawa Cemetery, where we know the Mothman cultists gather to worship in the church. I see it all. Kill it. The flood. The flood. This allows us to figure out who Charles is. Remember in my video on the Mothman, we explored all of Point Pleasant and we found a basement at the bottom of the Mothman Museum that had a bit of a chapel. On the podium, we found some notes from before the war where we learned that Mothman cultists here worshiped the Mothman before the bombs dropped and one of their members, a man named Charles, warned them all about the nuclear apocalypse. He told them about the flood that was gonna happen, the flood of nuclear hellfire. And with this knowledge, the Mothman cultists here were presumably able to save themselves, which must have happened if we find wise Charles the Forewarned alive and well. No, find him. They are with him now. I was mistaken. I hear nothing. Everything. Wallace and Sir. is there, there, return me, is not father, a disc, red, sauce, stop, Save them. Do not believe her. The glow. The cord. It lies. Cut it. Leave her. Choose her. Kill it. He says a lot of other cryptic stuff that we just can't decipher yet. What was he mistaken about? Who are they? And who is him? Who is Wallace? What is this red disc? And how does it pertain to sauce? And we notice that his head is slightly bulbous and his eyes glow white. And on more than one occasion, he mentions her, how we shouldn't believe her, how we should destroy her, how we should leave her, but then also choose her. 
cut the cord? What on earth is he talking about? Perhaps these are things that we will better understand if we ever get a chance to visit this lantern. And also standing atop the rooftop of the Mothman Museum is another man named Interpreter Clarence. The light has drawn you to us. Speak. There is much to learn. I am Interpreter Clarence of the Wise Mothman's Enlightenment. How may I be of service to you, child? What? It's Vincent Price! Ghosts. I think everyone wonders what they would do if they saw a ghost. And now my wife has given us all the opportunity to find out. Hmm. (laughs) Okay, well, uh, hey there, reincarnated Vincent Price. Uh, What's going on here? We have congregated in celebration of the Mothman Equinox. Here we will perform a ritual in order to summon the wise Mothman back to his home. The equinox is a time when the stars and planets align in a manner that grants the wise one power beyond his normal greatness. When does the equinox begin? Not long now, but do not hesitate to wonder. We shall call the children to return when the time comes. Can I ask something else? Of course. We would never hinder the search for knowledge. Who are you? We are the wise Mothman's enlightened. We are pilgrims of knowledge. Where do you come from? We have ventured from our place of study, the Lantern, far from here. During the time of the equinox, myself and a group of observers make the perilous trip to the wise one's homeland. Wait, there's more of you? Yes. I was accompanied by three observers, Errol, Marlin, and Johanna. You will find them tending to the ritual pyres in the far reaches of this sacred site. If you speak, do not be offended by the absence of their minds. They are but humble witnesses to his wisdom and have much left to learn from him. Oh, well, that explains a few things. Where is the lantern? Far from here. Should you ever feel the pull of its light, your journey will take you there. Observers? Is that some kind of rank? Those of us who endeavor to find the truth in the wise one's words go through several stages of learning. The observer is the Lala, one who knows their place and knows there is much more to come. For the knowledge of ignorance, of our place, is an essential first step. A bug must first know it's a bug. I, as an interpreter, am a pupil, surrounding myself in a cocoon of his words, absorbing, casting form from them. The venerable wise Charles, who graces us with his company, has broken from his cocoon. He, and very few like him, may flutter and dance in the light of his infinite wisdom for the remainder of his bright but fleeting existence. Fleeting? Well, he was around before the bombs dropped. He's kind of old. Wouldn't call that fleeting. Well, I wanted to ask something else. Please do. What's with the old man? This is wise Charles, the forewarned. He holds a special place in our history. Like me, he hopes to hear the wise one's words once again. Here we can pass a perception check of ten or greater to say, his head appears a bit larger than usual. Our meager form is but a shell, a cocoon. He has broken from it and his vessel has become a cup overflowing with vision. Is he okay? He, uh, seems a bit out of it. Exposure to the wise one's aura leaves the mind in a place beyond our own. His vessel offers naught but faint flutters of his wings against the window pane of his mind. Well, I guess I'll go ask him myself. Are you going to try to speak to him, are you? Well, you may try, 
but his mind is on another plane, beyond our own. I've been attacked by Mothman cultists before. Why are you different? Do not mistake us for the Dim Ones, followers of the Red-Eyed Pretender. Fools who flee from his wisdom and cling to a false god, a flawed, visionless, holy Mothman. They seek violence because facing a worthy death is far less frightening than facing the truth. Oh, so this is like a different faction of Mothman cultists. The ones we've been killing in Appalachia all this time are the Dim Ones. And I guess all of the other Mothmen we've found have been like uh, imposter Mothmen. Not the true wise Mothman that these guys want to summon here. And we can ask him about this wise Mothman, holy Mothman. What's the difference? The wise Mothman is a single entity, though immeasurable in power with knowledge beyond the age of man. He is but mortal nonetheless. The red-eyed pretenders are wild animals, seeking nothing but the same violence that their dim followers crave. The dim ones believe the red-eyed animals are harbingers of the holy Mothman, some kind of otherworldly god, a false idol. They fear their mortality. They fear their insignificance. We embrace it as the wise one has shown us. All right, so all of these dim ones we've been killing all this time, they call out to this holy mothman in their death throes. But this holy mothman may not even exist. And he's certainly not the same wise mothman we are here to summon. Well, what is the truth exactly? Spend time with a wise one, without fear, without hesitation. And it will come to you in time. All right, well, I'll be going now. Safe travels, child. And that's all they'll say to us until it's time to perform the ceremony. Once an hour, at the top of the hour, Interpreter Clarence calls all those who will listen to help him get ready to summon the wise Mothman. Gather, children. The time draws near. Climb to his throne and let us discuss the details of the ritual. We begin the event, The Mothman Equinox. Perform a ritual to summon the wise Mothman at the height of his power. When ready, we can speak to him. The time for the Equinox has come, children. Gather, speak with me. Children, listen well. Three piles have been placed throughout the wise one's home. Their light is a vital catalyst to our ritual. The Dim Ones have attempted to contain our light. Destroy their vines encircling each pyre before we proceed. Each pyre is attended by a Wise One's Observer. Only when the vines have been destroyed will the Observers instruct you on your next task. Hurry now, children. His patience does not run as deep as his wisdom. Seek out the three pyres, children. Rip the vines that try to contain their light. Now we have to go to one of the three ritual pyres and destroy the vines that encircle them. We'll start with the church pyre. The vines are not very hard to destroy. One or two hits from a melee weapon, and they go down. Once the vines are gone, we can talk with Observer Errol for further instructions. A fine start. But our work is far from complete. False prophets of the pretenders clamber throughout this sacred ground. Their presence corrupts our ritual. Their faint flickers must be snuffed out. Hunt them. Destroy them. Fill the streets with their foul icor. Look for eyes that glow. They believe themselves to be the pretenders incarnate. Rip those silly glasses from their skulls. The ritual cannot begin if they still live. Hunt them. With that, six cultist prophets spawn in Point Pleasant. We have to hunt them down and kill them. Don't be the 
There is much left undone. This sacred land must be properly prepared for his coming. Next, we can go to the waterside pyre and destroy the vines that encircle it. Rid those silly vines from our precious bonfire, hmm? We cannot start until you do. Once done, we can check in with Observer Johanna for further instructions. Do you smell the pleasant musk in the air? That metallic sweet aroma? That is blood of the purest white rag size. But what we have is not enough. Fetch us some more on top of our lovely blood troughs with your donations. How embarrassed would we be if the wise one were to appear and the town smelled only of the pretender's blood? So embarrassed, really. Yes, really. But with that, a whole bunch of albino rad stags spawn in the town. We have to go hunt them down as well. After killing an albino rad stag, we can loot albino rad stag blood off of their bodies. Once we have blood, we can take the blood to any of the number of blood troughs we find scattered throughout Point Pleasant. We can pour in the blood to top off the trough. And with that, a bell tolls like a Metallica song. We need to top off the troughs with 15 pieces of the albino radstag blood. The dim ones believe they can darken his glow. Destroy the vines around each pile. Leave their efforts in ruin. When done, we can go to the final pyre, the one by the bridge, and destroy the vines that encircle it. Insufferable. Destroy these feeble attempts at containment. I know I told them! They are watching! From above. Yes, those. Those infernal totems. But why? Yes, you're right. They must be destroyed. I will tell them. Destroy those blasted totems! See? I told them. Okay, now we understand what he was talking about, the things perched on the rooftops looking at us. They're actually totems, and we find these totems scattered atop the roofs of Point Pleasant. These totems appear to be made with a dismembered human torso and a ram's skull. They're splayed out, and above them is a sign that reads, Abandon Hope. We cannot begin the ritual in full until each of the fires has been prepared with the other. Venture to the observers. Listen to their instructions. They glow red, making them easy to spot. We've got to destroy ten of them. Once done, Clarence calls to us. The ritual site had been prepared. The summoning shall commence. Once each of the pyres has been lit. Go, ignite the flames as I release the dust of our wise one into the air. Now we have to light each of the three pyres. The waterside pyre, the bridge pyre, and the church pyre. Ah, yes. The flames of our pyres ignite the moth dust. It offers enlightenment, however brief it may be. Breathe, children! Breathe! With that, the Hornwright devices on the rooftops come to life and begin to spew moth dust into the air. See the world now through his eyes, children. Let the dust and flames and fumes feel you. Let it soak into your throats. Let it show you the truth. But prepare yourselves, for the heretic Jim Bonds will be enraged by this vision. <laughs> the reality of our wise one will send them into a frenzy. You must protect our sacred lights, the pyres, from those wretched fiends. Without the fire's glow, our guest may refuse our invitation. The Dean Ones approach the church. Slay them, children! Offer no quarter! The heretics, the Dim Ones, begin to attack the pyres, and they start with the church pyre. 
We have to defend it. Deceive you, all you see before you is sky. No matter its shape, man or beast, these twisted shadows all serve the will of the false ones. Then the heretics attack the bridge pyre, but they bring with them a bunch of death claws. We not only have to kill the dim ones, but also these death claws. it in? I am! Stop smothering me! Then the waterside pyre comes under fire. The foul dim ones are headed toward the waterside pyre, children. You must protect it! We have to race to defend it, but nearly as soon as we get there... These unwavering fools attack from all sides. Leave no pyre unguarded. Leave no heretic left standing. All three pyres come under attack. We have to defend them all simultaneously. The Waterside Pyre tends to be attacked by the Red-Eyed Mothmen, the ones Interpreter Clarence calls mere animals. We have a minute and 30 seconds or so to defend all three pyres from this final wave. When done, Clarence summons us to the rooftop of the Mothman Museum. Do you feel it? The wise one draws near. He awaits our signal. Quickly, children, return to me upon the museum's rooftop. We must invite him to us to show him our love and our gratitude. Dance, sing. Shout! Expel bile from your gut! Show emotion! Show... Do you hear us, wise one? Come unto us! That expansion you feel in your mind, that growing sense of wisdom and foresight... Become children. Now we've got about a minute and a half to dance or perform some other sort of emote on the rooftop. We need to spam 30 of them before the wise Mothman can be summoned. Show him! Show him what you are! Show him your truth! He will show you in kind! <laughs> oh. We are but meager insects before your intellect. Come, children. Allow the wise one to gaze upon you. Bask. Bask in his infinite wisdom. With that, we complete the event. And we get better rewards based on our performance. As long as there are enough people on the server, it's actually pretty easy to pass this one getting best performance. 
and so I actually haven't completed this, getting only bad or good performance. So the best rewards we can get are 500 experience, 60 caps, 3 treasury notes, 3 legendary cores, a 1 star randomly generated legendary item, some randomized loot, and one brand new Mothman Equinox item. I think the chance to get a Mothman Equinox item is lower if we complete the event on bad or good performance, but it's a guaranteed drop if we complete it on best performance. That is, we protect all of the pyres from being destroyed. Most of the Mothman Equinox rewards are clothing items. There are a number of new cultist suits we can get that come in a clothing and helmet pair. There's the cultist neophyte set, that has the matching costume and helmet. The helmet is more of a hood, and the neophyte set stands out as having a bunch of sticks and brambles sticking out of it. It also covers the least amount of skin. Then there's the Cultist Adept set. This hood has a different style, and it doesn't have any brambles. The clothing outfit covers more skin, but it still has some brambles sticking out of it. Then there's the Cultist Enlightened set. This is the set that Interpreter Clarence wears. It has a completely different style of hood, and the unique thing about the suit is that it has a little Mothman symbol on the chest. Then there's the Cultist Incarnate helmet. This does not have a matching outfit that goes along with it, but it is the most elaborate helmet. It appears to be cobbled together with a cultist hood, some radstag antlers, a boar's head, and a gas mask. It's really weird, very cultish, and pretty cool. It's also the only item that has any functional effect. It protects us from damage and disease from airborne hazards. Then we have a chance to find a plan to craft the cultist backpack. I've read online that there are a lot of people who are not terribly thrilled with the look of the cultist backpack. I actually kind of like it. It's really simplistic. It appears to be just like a, a straw, cloth, and leather backpack. It's got some floaters in there, a belt at the top to cinch it together. I don't know, it's kind of weird, but cool as well. And then there are two camp items that we can get. The first is the plan for the Mothman Equinox Souvenir Beer Stein. This was the first item that I got, and we can craft it at our camp just like the other various beer steins we get from other seasonal events. It depicts the Mothman with red eyes, its wings folded around its torso, with a little lantern on the head. Then there's the Wise Mothman Throne. I never actually got this to drop in my game, but etiquette during these events is to drop duplicate rewards that we get on the ground after the event completes. In this way, I've given away lots of duplicate costumes that I've gotten, and I was able to get the plan for the wise Mothman throne that somebody dropped down because they already had it. This is exactly like the Mothman throne we find at the top of the Mothman Museum, but we can now put it in our camp. After completing the event, the Mothman appears on the roof of Point Pleasant, and we can interact with him. doesn't say anything, but upon interacting with him, we get a buff called the True Wisdom of the Mothman, which grants us plus 15% bonus to experience for one hour. Upon the Mothman's arrival, the cultists gather around him and kneel before him. We can interact with each of them. I'm so happy to see him again! Mr. Oh, Pride! I'm so happy! Mother, I'm so glad. It is so good to see him. Hey, Interpreter Clarence, what's happening to me? Why is the sky purple like that? Tis but your mind to lead it to its death. In order to allow the virus bomb to absorb the planetary energy of the equinox, yes. the environment must be made more hospitable. What you are experiencing is a temporary relief of the burden that comes with a simple mind. What you see now is the truth. But when will it be normal again? Do you fear the truth? It can be painful to witness. Simply leave the sacred land and the foggy lens of normal sight shall return to you. Oh, uh, okay. Enjoy this glow, child. 
you ever experience such a taste of enlightenment? Mm. Oh, what news they'll bring back to me? They're always more pleasant after speaking to him. I hope I didn't alarm you. They're speaking to him now, so at last I can hear more clearly. I am thankful for what I've been shown. My hunger will be satiated soon. After completing the event for the first time, we can head back to the church and again try to read the tomes. We now find that the first one is unlocked. This one is called Catechism of the Wise Hillary, the Scourge, as transcribed by Interpreter Jill. Time and again has the wise Mothman come, and time and again the ignorant heard not the message he bore. They were deaf to his whispers, seeing only a monster, a specter, filling them with dread from a world they could not understand. The ignorant heard of his passing and believed not the witnesses, naming him a figment of delusional minds. Yet the wise Mothman was no emissary from other realms, nor was he a hallucination of the senses. Time and again has the wise Mothman come, and time and again fools and dullards heard his whisper, yet understood it not. They were closed to his message, hearing only the echo of their own small minds bouncing within their skulls. The dim ones named him God and fell to their knees, calling themselves Chosen. Yet the wise Mothman was no skyborn deity, nor had he come to anoint them elect. Time and again has the wise Mothman come, and time and again the mad and twisted have rejected his message. They were attuned to other whispers, hearing the call of a thing beyond, drawn to the deep places of the earth for inhuman purpose. The broken heard the song of the interloper and turned from the truth, scorning wisdom as the product of mere mortals in favor of the unknowable. Yet the wise Mothman remains with us, and his truth shields us from the call. The wise Mothman whispered, and wise Charles heard and understood. He guarded us from the flood and the fire, and while others fell, we endured. While the dim ones succumbed to the delusion of holiness, we witnessed truth. While the mad were called to their thonic master, we spurned the slavery of the unliving. We are enlightened, and we know these things to be true. The wise Mothman is among us, and of us. The wise Mothman lives. We feel his breath and hear the beat of his wings, and know that he is more alike to us than not. The wise Mothman comes to us and shares with us his truth. The wise Mothman has found his truth through understanding the world as it is, and through observation we approach his understanding. His truth is a lesson. His truth is a warning. His truth is a path to enlightenment. We thank the wise Mothman who shares his truth with us and reject the falseness of ignorant deniers, dull idolatrators, and warp-minded servitors. We observe, we interpret, we listen to his whispers and become wise. We can try to read the next one, but if we do, we see that we are still not ready to gaze upon the tome. We have to complete this event two more times, for a total of three times before we can read the second tome. Once done, we can read The Sayings of Alicia. The Sayings of Interpreter Alicia, as recorded by Observer James. The Wise Mothman is. The Wise Mothman was. The Wise Mothman will be. Before the flood, before the fire, before the dim ones, the wise Mothman saw what its brethren could not, and the truth was known. The wise Mothman sees not, for he has gifted his vision to you. The wise Mothman flies not on wings, for his truth has lifted you up. The wise Mothman bears no heart, for his beats inside the breast of all who listen. The dim ones heard his message, and it filled them with fear. They cowered and prayed and made of him a god, but this was not his truth. But some listened and understood, and they had no fear and became wise. 
The wise, in turn, bore this truth to us, and we listen and scorn the dim ones who rejected the gift. We gather to witness the works and truth of the wise Mothman, glorious Mothman, presage of doom, herald of salvation. We stand ready for your truth. As your wisdom has cracked wide the knowing of all things, so too shall we transcend the limits of human understanding, students of your gentle teaching. The ignorant are always welcome among us, for ignorance is the beginning of enlightenment. The ignorant may learn and hear, and in so doing the truth becomes known to them, yet they may struggle to understand. So do the ignorant learn to observe and watch for his sign, that they may return to the fold bearing witness and add to our awareness of his truth. Having observed, they may come to understand and learn to interpret what has been witnessed and share this understanding with us all. In the interpretation of what has been observed, we may all be fellows to the wise Mothman and bearers of his truth. We unlock the next totem after completing this event a total of six times. This one is called Exodus. Exodus of the Enlightened, as told to Interpreter Makilla by Wise Pearl the Augur. It came to pass that the worshippers of the Pretender Mothman, Wise Charles then being among their number, did attempt to summon the Mothman and receive his glory. Charles alone heard the whispers of the wise Mothman and bore his warning of fire and flood and guided his brethren to safety in the Lucky Hole Mine. The mine sheltered the Mothman's faithful through Apocalypse, but there they turned to darker worship, and the time came for wise Charles to see past the visions of the Dim Ones to the greater truth bestowed by the wise Mothman. Some listened and heard, and when they could no more bear the corruption and falsehoods of those who were once their brethren, the enlightened left behind the lies of the deceiver. The world was wild and dark, and many horrors awaited the enlightened in the lands outside the safety of the mine. Dark beasts and strange pestilence stalked the land, and some among the enlightened fell to their knees, crying, What has become of our home? Why have we survived when all is lost? Are we forsaken? They called out to Charles to return to the mine and reject the truth, saying there was nothing for them here. Wise Charles smiled upon them, and the light of the Mothman's wisdom shone as he spake to them, saying there was safety beyond the hills they had known. A lantern awaited them, a beacon of safety, and home for those that had heard the truth and been enlightened. He would guide them, and they would fear neither beast nor plague, and would pass beyond the reach of the Dim Ones and the influence of the Pretender, the Deceiver. So did the enlightened journey from the bounds of the West Virginia that was into lands untouched by the scorched plague. There they founded their church, naming it the Lantern as had been foreseen. Its light shines in darkness, a symbol of truth no shadow can conquer, and it calls to the wise Mothman wherever he may be, telling him, Here are those who hear your truth. Long may the lantern shine against the ignorance of the world, and never may the dim ones and the falsehoods of the red-eyed pretender snuff out its beacon. This one puts the pieces together. Charles foresaw the nuclear apocalypse of 2077, and he took the Mothman worshippers in Point Pleasant all the way to the Lucky Hole Mine, where they survived the apocalypse. But there they heard the words of the interloper. The interloper confused their faith, and many of the Mothman cultists turned to worshipping him. But only wise Charles still heard the words of the wise Mothman, and led a small group of the Mothman faithful out of the Lucky Hole Mine and out of West Virginia, whereupon they founded Lantern. The next tome unlocks to us after completing the event a total of ten times. It is called Observations, Volume 27. Observations, Volume 27, Annotations by Interpreter Walsh. Woods, Ohio, past midnight, gibbous moon. The howl of wolves is quieted by the wind-stirring flutter of tremendous wings. Silence settles over the forest, and I sleep unafraid. Interpreter Walsh. 
As the lesser creatures tame their ferocity under the calming influence of the wise Mothman, so too should we cultivate tranquility. And then we go back to the original author. Deserted town. Virginia? Galax? Sign damaged. Dusk. Waning crescent just above horizon. In silhouette against the dying sun, purple orbs shine from a shadow. I am certain it is no longer safe and must find new shelter. Interpreter Walsh. The wise Mothman oft appears to guide those with eyes to see and ears to listen. He is without malice, but in his wake travels darkness and danger. Mountain Trail, Tennessee. Late afternoon. Storm clouds. A shadow passes overhead, gone before I can see it. The wind carries a fine gray powder, which clings to my face and hair. Interpreter Walsh. As students of his wisdom, we must remind ourselves that not everything is a lesson. The dim ones would rave about the holy blessing of his dust. We remember he is wise, but he is also a moth. Highway, Virginia. Night, maybe an hour past full dark. New moon. Sitting at a campfire, I hear the beat of his wings and the sound of him alight behind me. I know he is not here to be seen, and I remain facing the fire. He whispers, and I see forests I have not walked. I awake with no memory of his departure, the sun rising in the east. Interpreter Walsh. Not all students can bear his truth when heard directly, and not all knowledge can be understood when learned. We hear his message, and our mind opens, but only when we are ready do we know its meaning. Watauga, West Virginia. Nearly dawn. Moon had set. I saw the wise mothman eat a robo-brain. I was hiding in one of them porta-potty jobs, and the robo-brain was shooting all kinds of holes in it. And then, the wise mothman swooped down out of nowhere and just stuffs the whole robo-brain into its mouth bits. And then he says, It's all good, Dave. And flies away. Interpreter Walsh. Observer Dave has once again fallen prey to the lure of chems. Dave, not the wise mothman, unwittingly teaches us a lesson here. <laughs> this is great. I think it's my favorite one so far. Sounds like this might be a journal that some of the Mothman cultists had written on their way from the Lucky Hole Mine towards the Lantern. Perhaps these became sacred texts of their group's exodus to the Lantern, and subsequent interpreters were cultivating them, annotating them, and incorporating them into some sort of canonical religious literature. The next tome opens to us after we complete the event a total of 15 times. It's called On the Thesis of Wallace. On the thesis of Dr. Wallace, as told by Wise Martin, the Bearded. Our benighted brethren among the Dim Ones, even in their misguided worship of the Pretender, seek to know their false god better by increasing their understanding of him as a natural phenomenon. They make of him a supernatural being, yet they have clamored and scrabbled over the writings of those who, like us, study the physical reality of the Mothman. So it was that the Dim Ones sought the lost manuscript of Dr. Wallace, an entomologist of some small repute, who wrote his doctoral thesis on the moths of the Appalachian region. The Dim Ones believed these writings would unlock the mysteries of the Mothman and bring upon them a clarity and wisdom that even they understood they lacked. The knowledge of one's own ignorance is the beginning of wisdom, as Benjamin Franklin noted, yet even from this knowledge they reject the truth of the wise Mothman. They believed this thesis of Dr. Wallace would enlighten them, when enlightenment was already there for those who would listen. The Dim Ones searched for his manuscript in the Kanawha County Cemetery, believing it entombed with him in the mausoleum there. Here we see the folly of their deification of the red-eyed pretender, for why should an entomologist be buried with their thesis? The Dim Ones imagined a sacred relic of divine truth worthy of veneration and a hallowed resting place. Yet Dr. Wallace was not of their number, and to him the thesis was just another paper among many, notable only for securing his doctoral credentials. Those who would seek his thesis, unblinded by the beliefs of the Dim Ones, would be better served stalking the libraries of the institution which granted Dr. Wallace his degree. I expect it waits there, if it survived at all, moldering unread among the hundreds of other student works. 
Perhaps it holds some small light that would help us understand the wise Mothman's truth, but it is as likely filled with little more than a study of ordinary moths. It is no grail awaiting a questing knight. The wise Mothman is here, and for those ready to listen, his truth is not hidden. Oh my god, this one is fascinating, and it sends us on a scavenger hunt. Where is Dr. Wallace? Was he really buried at the cemetery? Can we really find his thesis? Charles the Forewarned, at least, thinks that Wallace may be important. Wallace. <laughs> and To find out, we can go to the Kanawa Cemetery. We've known for some time that the cultists like to congregate here, and now we know why. They're searching for his thesis. We find them in the church sanctuary. After clearing the cultists, we do find a few new notes here. These were added to the Kanawa Cemetery with the Wastelanders DLC. On the tipped over pulpit, we find sermon notes. Listen, my followers. I call you not believers, but followers, for we no longer are believers, but followers in these new beginnings. Open your eyes, open your ears, and open your hearts. Have you not heard from all of the new inhabitants of Appalachia? The sightings are real. The encounters are true. We offer the gift of the woods. As we build and expand, we will grow closer to him, away from the plights of man. Look above. We will grow, grow out to him. He is out there. He will come, and we will be there. But perhaps the most interesting note that corresponds to what we just learned in the last tome is on the second floor of the church. Here we find a desk, and lying on the desk is a letter. Roland, the group has returned to the Kanawa church in search of Dr. Wallace. We believe the mausoleum in the graveyard contains his remains. He is a famous entomologist who might hold the answers to all of our questions. We have been unsuccessful in finding this thesis paper he wrote while studying moths in the region. It is possible it might be buried with his belongings. I know it's a long shot, but it might be the key. I would like you to come to one of our sermons and check out the church. We also have a stash of eggs on the premises. We have been hoarding them and bringing them up to the church, hoping he will come. Having you as a guest will really help expand our reach. Lying next to this letter on the desk are some keys to the mausoleum. We find the stash of eggs he was talking about in a nearby barn or shed next to the graveyard. And we find the mausoleum where Dr. Wallace was buried almost smack dab in the center of the graveyard. And sure enough, the keys we found on the desk open the door. However, inside the mausoleum, we don't find any research paper by a famous entomologist. We don't really find much, to be perfectly honest. A little bit of scrap here and there, a few containers. But the tome where we first learned about Wallace and his research told us that it would be unlikely for us to find the research here. Instead, it suggested that we search a library, perhaps a library from the university where Dr. Wallace graduated. We immediately think of vault Tech University. I couldn't think of any other university in Appalachia or any other library in Appalachia that we could explore. So I went to vault Tech University. However, we don't find any new notes or terminal entries talking about Dr. Wallace, his research on moths, or any other entomologist. Of course, we do find the new quest-related content that was added with Wastelanders, but nothing relating to the Mothman is included in it. So perhaps we can't find this research yet. Maybe it's waiting for us at Lantern. The final tome opens up to us once we've completed this event a total of 21 times. It's called False Gods of Appalachia. False Gods of Appalachia by Wise Nathaniel the Shadowed. 
The wise Mothman calls the mountains and woods of Appalachia home, yet the region is the haunt of other strangeness as well. These rolling hills are ancient beyond human comprehension, and what were once towering peaks to shame the Alps remain home to things likewise outside mortal experience. Many a credulous soul has attributed deific qualities to these things, as do the dim ones, and in so doing are deafened to the wise Mothman's truth. Here I catalog some of these false gods, that the student of his wisdom may not be led into the temptation of dark mysteries, which bear within them no light of knowledge. The Deceiver Mothman and His Progeny As the wise Mothman's eyes glow with the violet light of his wisdom, his unenlightened brethren's vision is cloaked in crimson. They and their spawn heed not the actions of humankind, nor care for us, making of us naught but prey and sport. The dim ones see them and think them gods, divine and sacred, and fall to the ground in obeisance. Be not deceived, student of truth. These fire-eyed Lepidoptera are neither god nor angel, and have no wisdom to share. The Flatwoods Monster Shun this accursed creature, dear student, should you cross paths with its haunting form. Let not its amaranthine glow fool you. It shares no kinship to the wise Mothman, and where his truth sets loose your mind from the fetters of falsehood, this hovering nightmare binds it. There is no wisdom to be found in such a being. Squatches of Diverse Shape Many tell tales of encounters with beast people in the wilds of Appalachia, ape men of giant stature and foul stench, hybrids of human and livestock, goat and ram, even plants that walk and speak with vegetable minds, invading the thoughts of mortals. Some have observed these things, and we know them, but we likewise know that they are neither demon nor deity. Some have constructed totems to call or appease these creatures, and show themselves fools. A beast may come to food left to tempt it, or be frightened by a strange construction. This does not make it worthy of worship. The Interloper We who would learn at the chitinous knee of the wise Mothman, who hear his truth and observe the coming and going of him, must speak not of the Interloper. There is no fouler deceit than one garbed in truth. Shun its call, for it can bring only darkness. If the Mothmen know anything about the Interloper, they are silent. They don't tell us what sort of creature this is, what sort of power it has over the minds of men, how it could confuse some of their own members to cause what is essentially a civil war amongst the Mothmen cultists. What is the interloper, and what are its goals? Why are there different kinds of mothmen, and what's the difference between the purple-eyed variety and the red? We sadly walk away from this event without an answer, but perhaps that answer is waiting for us at Lantern. Will we ever venture outside of Appalachia to explore this lantern? I suppose all we can do is wait to find out. There is one more thing that comes with this update. Outside of Point Pleasant, while we wander Appalachia, we have a chance to bump into a cultist high priest. These high priests are hostile, and some of them have the ability to mesmerize nearby creatures to attack us. These cultist high priests are legendary enemies, and in addition to legendary enemy loot tables, they drop a cultist high priest pack. We open the high priest pack in our inventory, and each time we open it, we have a chance to be rewarded with some randomly generated items. We usually get some consumables, chems, food, and a Mothman egg. But we also have the chance to find a unique cultist high priest robe and helmet in the bag, and also a perfect Mothman egg. Now these cultist high priests themselves are very hard to find. I spent probably two and a half to three hours farming for cultist high priests, and I only ever found four. One at Camden Park, and three at the Poseidon Energy Plant. The cultist high priests are pretty beefy. I was able to kill them, but it took a lot of ammunition and time. In so doing, I got four of the cultist high priest packs, but none of them contained the cultist high priest robe or helmet. And I never got a perfect Mothman egg. 
The perfect Mothman egg is perishable, like the regular Mothman egg, and we can use it to make Mothman omelets. But it also has another purpose. If we go back to Point Pleasant and look behind the Mothman statue, we find a new trough called the Cradle of Pretenders. It's filled with Mothman eggs. But if we try to place something in it, we learn that we do not have the required item. Now, since I never got a perfect Mothman egg to drop, I can't test this for myself, but I'm told that if during the event we put a perfect Mothman egg inside the Cradle of Pretenders, that it alters the event slightly. Instead of Mothmen spawning by the waterside, hatchlings spawn at the waterside, making the event a little easier. The difficulty in obtaining an egg and how rare it is doesn't really seem to make it worth our time, but there you go. And that is the Mothman Equinox event. And I'd love to know what your thoughts are of the event. And what do you think about this lantern? Do you think that we'll be able to explore the lantern at some point? Perhaps as part of a future DLC? At that time, will we learn more about the interloper? Let me know your thoughts in the comment sections below. I publish new Fallout videos every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss my next one, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other items as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and patrons on Patreon gain access to their own channel on my Discord server, and YouTube members get little badges that appear next to their names in the comment sections of my videos, and access to ox emojis that they can use in my video comments and in the live chats of my live streams. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you you so much for watching and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos. I'm so happy to see him again. Oh, it was the bride. I'm so happy. This is the pacifist police. Pass up oh, you're, you're not pacifist. You fail. Pacifist police. You all pass except for this gentleman here. You fail, sir. You fail. I bid you good day!